So you're thinking about moving to Black Diamond, Washington. Well, stick around. This is gonna be the most in-depth video we have on Black Diamond. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in the computer and take a look at the map feature. We're gonna look at where Black Diamond is in relation to all the other major areas here in Washington State or the King County area. Um, kind of what's around it, airport, Seattle, mountains, all that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna zoom in on the map, look at what's in Black Diamond specifically, and then we'll go ahead and do um, a few of my favorite neighborhoods in Black Diamond. And after we're out of the map feature of the computer, then we'll go ahead and take you in our car, vlog style to show you a few of the different areas so you can see what it's actually like, you know, walking through the streets there. So if you're looking to learn more about Black Diamond, stick around, we're gonna get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time on the channel and you want to know all there is to know about living in King County, Washington or places like Black Diamond, like we're talking about today, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell for notifications. That way you can be the first to be notified of a new video that comes out of either Black Diamond or one of our other favorite cities here in King County. I'm Brad Decatur with the Decatur Home Team and we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you every day who are looking to make their move to King County. So whether you're one day or one year away, we would love to connect and help you make a smooth move to King County. We have all of our information below. Shoot us a call, text, email. We can hop on a Zoom call to talk about the market. We would love to help you. So like I said, this is the map video, so I'm gonna turn this camera off, hop in the computer right now. We'll see you there. Hey everybody, we are in the computer now, so I am gonna do a screen share and we'll get right to it. So like I said, this is the map video. So what we'll do is we'll give you an idea of where Black Diamond is in relation to kind of other areas. So we'll start off by, let me do an outline. A lot of times Google Maps um, does that for me, but it is not. So I will let you know about how big it is. So Black Diamond is gonna be about this area and it becomes Ravensdale. It does go around Lake Sawyer right on that, that Southeast 288th is the road there that kind of borders it down through here and connecting there. So that's 10 trails. So I'm zoomed in, so you can't really see how small it is. So let's zoom out. There we go. Okay. So you can see here, uh, the little circle, that's Black Diamond. So it is a very small town. Quick little backstory. I don't know all the exact history, but this used to be a coal mining town. It was actually one of the biggest ones, I think, in the whole state. So super cool history as far as that goes. Um, the reason it's completely changed now is because of a main community called 10 Trails Community, which is an amazing master plan community. Um, so you should check out the other videos here uh, after this video check out the video specific to 10 trails but 10 trails is awesome but map video here we go just showing you kind of where things are so black diamond is right down here cool history um but i like to first show you guys where the main cities are so we got bellevue seattle kirkland and redmond so black diamond definitely a commuter town not a lot of people are probably going to be working in black diamond so definitely is going to be your commuter town or people who are working remote um Typically, of course, you could work anywhere, obviously, in the state, but in most cases, people are driving to one of these major markets. So Seattle, very common, Bellevue, Redmond, and Kirkland. If you're a tech person, you're probably going to be here most, most, most likely. Um, so proximity is the thing I, start, I like to start with. So Seattle, I-5 down here, and head over to Black Diamond. That is going to be... Um, it's about 39 miles uh, from Black Diamond to Seattle. So it's about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the timing of it, that you go. Um, and that's to downtown right here. So like this is T-Mobile Field, uh, Seahawks Stadium also right here. And you can see Seattle goes all the way up to about Shoreline and all the way down Burien. So you can see how big Seattle is compared to Black Diamond, very small town, okay? Uh, Bellevue, you're gonna go straight from 405 all the way down, then head on over through Covington, most likely that I'd probably come down uh, right there. So 35 minutes, 45 minutes from Bellevue and Seattle is your commute time. Um, other than that, you know, what you're gonna wanna know that's around you is SeaTac is the airport. That is pretty close, actually much closer than a lot of areas which is nice. That's probably about 20, 25 minutes um, to Black Diamond. So not too bad there. 
Um, other than going like, you know, multiple hours away for something specific in the state of Washington, you're probably not going to go much, uh, you know, beyond like kind of where this map is at. Tacoma's down here. That's kind of a good one to know about. Also pretty close. That's uh, another big major market. So Tacoma Dome would be a big one. The, the Port of Tacoma, lots of trading going on there. You actually potentially, depending on the type of work you're in, you could be working in Tacoma too. It's kind of like a big city. Another one is Snoqualmie Pass. So that's going to be your mountain uh, for skiing and snowboarding. And again, it's really not too far. I would probably, you probably go up towards 18. So cut over 18 to I-90. And there we go. Still pretty far. Pro probably, I, I have to map it out. Probably 45, yeah, 45 minutes or so, maybe 50. Um, that's a pretty messy screen here. Sorry about that. So let's erase that stuff. Um, so that's the whole first part of the video. Hopefully that helps you guys out you know, kind of where Black Diamond is in relation to everything else, Seattle, Bellevue, uh, airport, mountains. And while we're still on here, I guess I'll just touch on a few of the areas uh, around it that are not the main cities. So Issaquah is a great area, Sammamish, North Bend, Snoqualmie area is kind of the valley. Uh, Maple Valley is your nearest, you know, bordering city. Uh, Covington also touches Black Diamond, depending on in which which area you're going to. Maple Valley is a really great market. That's where I live. Uh, so if you're interested in that one, you can definitely check it out. But we are only, I mean, depending on which part of Maple Valley you're in, the main section, the main section, eight minutes, less than that, probably very, very close. Um, but things do change a little bit at the border as far as like school districts go. So. All right, we'll get into actual black diamond here. So now we'll zoom in and the rest of the video, you guys, I'm gonna show you kind of the main areas of black diamond. Honestly, this video will be a lot shorter than most other videos. Uh, you know, if I was doing this of Seattle, there'd be so many things to show you in Seattle when I zoom in, which is what I'm doing now. Um, but black diamond, I gotta tell you, it's really, like I said, it was, it was a, um, coal mining town, you know, back in the day, there's not a ton going on there right now, except for the one main thing, which is 10 trails, you know, community. Um, so not a whole lot to show you. There's not a big shopping center. There's not, um, you know, tons of entertainment and awesome places to eat, things like that. So there's not a ton going on there, not to make it sound terrible or anything, but, uh, it has its perks and I'll, I'll get to that too. Okay. So here we are black diamond. Um, so the first thing I guess I'll show you is probably the 10 trails community. So this is the, I guess, this is the main, you know, Black Diamond here, the technically, you know, the, the downtown of Black Diamond. So post office, that kind of stuff. They do have some restaurants, right? So don't get me wrong. <laughs> they do have some restaurants and some stuff to do. Um, but one of the main things going on is the 10 trails community. So we'll zoom in here. So you can see that it's kind of like, looks like dirt uh, in, in a good portion of it. So this is all the new construction. Um, so this is a master plan community. I wish I had the exact number. I think it's somewhere in the 25, 3000, you know, house range. It's, it's actually got three phases. It, it could be 15 to 20 year project. Um, so what you see right here is obviously real live satellite time. It is going to expand from here even much, much, much further. This is probably phase one phase two is probably the outskirts here. I'd have to actually, you know what, I'll show you a map of what they have planned too, but lots of stuff going on 10 trails. So Anytime you're in a master community, it's a really good investment opportunity, which is one of my main pros of why I do love Black Diamond right now. Um, I think it's a really, really good upside market. Um, as things happened in COVID 2020, you know, there was a real push in our areas, in our markets um, towards places like Black Diamond and Maple Valley um, or Fall City, Snoqualmie, places that were not quite your Bellevue, Seattle, Issaquah that are really right there in the hubs. Um, but still really great markets, pretty good schools, but much better bang for your buck. And then more importantly, it's, it's actually the land. It was the push towards getting some more space for people and families who are then working from home. Um, so Black Diamond's done very well since then. And since this master plan community is coming in, I feel really strongly about the overall market and its future, um, even, even against some of those other great markets that I'm talking about, like Isquan Bellevue and stuff. Um, I just think, you know, as things change and this thing gets fully, fully developed, anytime you're in a master plan community like that, it just, it's, it's really good to get on the ground floor. So real quick, I'll just touch on what's going on in 10 trails. Um, so again, tons and tons of houses. This is one where they have a bunch of different builders. I believe last time I checked, there was eight different builders, Ichiro, uh, Main View, uh, Oak Ridge, Toll Brothers, Lennar is there. And obviously a few, I think there's about eight. So 
the the master community is selling off their lots to these little subdivisions so there's a good really great variety of housing in 10 trails because not only do they just have different builders but there's different products as well within the builders they have condo townhomes they have single family they have you know 2000 square feet 4500 square feet different size homes um and the, and the main thing that i think is the best part and why i think this whole thing is going to turn around why i think it's a good investment opportunity is because of their master plan they have not just the houses so over here they have the retail so right here is going to be the retail center and they're also building a school um and so again not to say the same thing over and over again but when you get in the ground floor before the stuff is built um it's it's typically going to be a good thing for value so it'd be great if it was just the first house but right now they already have it established which is great so they have a lot of houses that are already built they already have the parks and trails ready to go but there's still a lot more to do and when this is really done uh, <clears throat> it's going to be i think very attractive to the buyers which is then going to affect the value and then when the uh, the value is affected and there's a lot more money in this area it will then change the rest of the landscape of the area too making it a really good market i think to be investing in so here i'll pull up the tendrails i pulled this up earlier so here's the main map um, that kind of shows you what's going on so if i can zoom in i don't know so you can see the top area that's all the retail the the retail village there they have all their houses over here they already started going this way for more houses now they're going down then then the school they're going to build be building is also going to be in this lower section and then they're going to keep keep on going so like i said it's three phases at this point on the map a lot of the stuff that's going to be built in 10 years is not even it's just trees right now but they do have a master huge huge plan um and again it's really going to change the landscape of this whole area so let me see if i can find the 10 trails here i had to pull that yep here's the 10 trails community okay so i was going to show you guys the retail section so i just clicked on retail so this is like a rendering of what it's going to look like in that area that i showed you a second ago um see if they have some more pictures i think they do at the bottom here we go retail village renderings so you can kind of see it. i'll get my face out of the way here so there look at that modern new there's the this is actually what it already currently looks like that's the main section there the main park um but this is their retail center so again getting in a house before this is built because it, it's right now it's 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 losing some attractive you know parts of having retail shopping centers and things to do the schools are not quite as good yet they don't have the main school built yet um so all these things you know make it less desirable now but also more desirable later um so that's one of my main points of why i'm even doing this video i just think it's a good investment opportunity i think it has really good future growth hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit more about the 10 trails community in general boy i do love these renderings that's cool all right back to the map okay so that's 10 trails i could i think i'll probably do another video on 10 trails completely and we'll show you a bunch of houses and things um but that is the 10 trails community another area of black diamond other than the downtown area right there is going to be lake sawyer so i think when i showed you guys the when i drew the map it kind of goes up around this lake lake sawyer is an awesome spot so in this video we'll show you footage of each neighborhood too so i'll come back to this um, but here's the actual lake it's a smaller lake so it's one of those things where um, it's got a really good feel to it it's not like a lake washington lake sammamish where it's just so big there's tons of motor boats on it all the time things like that um, there's lots of lake lake or waterfront homes on this lake um, which is great lake wilderness is an also another lake that's kind of close by but there's very little houses that are actually on there Hills Lake, Hills Lake, here is Lake Wilderness right here. So let me back up here. So yeah, Lake Sawyer is a really cool area. They also have a lot of family um, areas for, you know, you can actually go, see, so here we go, Lake Sawyer Park. So you can go take a look at it, um, you know, with your family and kind of hang out, which is nice. Here's a few pictures, really cool setting here. There we go. So yeah, Lake Sawyer's got a lot of good stuff. Here you can see 10, this is actually some more building going on. So here's the main 10 trails. Here's some more sections being built out. Uh, so it's just being developed like crazy, which is, like I said, a good thing uh, for future value. Um, so that's kind of all I had to show you about the general areas. Like I said, Black Diamond is pretty small. So this video, there's not tons and tons to see you. 
uh, to show you, excuse me. I'll hop into the downtown one more time and just see if I can pull up a few things that are really cool to do. Oops. All right, sorry, a little bit of technical difficulty there. We're back. Um, so I actually was able to find the border on Google Maps. So just so you guys can see it a little bit better, this is the border, Black Diamond Museum. So I was gonna head into downtown for a little bit to show you guys a few of the things that are down there. And then we will just go ahead and do my favorite neighborhoods and it won't wrap it up. So got coffee brewing. Here's the elementary school right there. Nope, nope. There we go. Got a lodge, pizza, gym. Uh, so like I said, that's pretty much it, you guys. You can see that there's no big, huge, like, you know, shopping center. You can tell that there's not that big parking lot. Anytime you see a Fred Meyer, Safeway, things like that, there's huge parking lots and usually a bunch of retail. You can see that's not the case here. It's like a tiny little parking lot with, you know, a that that's the school right there. But there's just not a ton going on, which is why the retail center in Black Diamond and in the 10 trails for me will be a big thing. Um, so not a whole lot to show you guys downtown area. Um, I would say before I hop into the neighborhoods, the main thing about Black Diamond is the, the 10 trails is for one. Um, but even if you were on the outskirts trying to get like a five acre property or something like that, you know, it's it's got a cool old town feel other than 10 trails. So if you're not in 10 trails and you're out here on the outskirts, like the downtown, you're getting an older house. Or if you're out here, like towards the outskirts, you're definitely getting some acreage. Um, also probably an older house, but they also have some serious like estates. Um, one of my favorite neighborhoods is over by Lake Sawyer. And this one is like, you know, one to five acres uh, or, or 10, some of them, but like big houses, um, four, five, six, 7,000 square feet with four or five acres. These are multi, multi million dollar houses. Um, and these are what I call estates. And these are just amazing properties, gated communities type stuff. Um, so with that, let's actually just hop in there. I'll just show you guys that right now. In fact, I think I had it pulled up on the MLS. So I'll do that first. So I'm on the MLS here. So I typed in, I want to do one plus acre to start off by showing you guys that kind of property. Um, and then we'll hop into 10 trails, kind of their average price points. And then we'll wrap it up here in just a few minutes. So do the map feature. Um, so yeah, this is meant to show you guys a little bit of an idea of like what you can get. Um, so if you're someone who's looking, you know, not for the new construction cookie cutter right next to each other houses, Black Diamond's got a, a lot of good variety. So this is one plus acre. These are all the ones that have sold here recently. Oops. That are over an acre. And so there's a good variety between, you know, like an older house, you know, not very nice, 12, 1300 square feet, still getting five acres for a pretty good price, like six, 700,000. Then there's also these estates for the, you know, you can see the one point something million. So let's take a look at a few, just to give you an idea. Let's go over to the main, the old area. That's where there's going to be some uh, better pricing. Here we go. 681 on the lake, 550 little cabin. What do we got here? 690 this is a good example what do we got so two yeah two and a half acres this is a prime this is perfect prime example let me move my head here um so yeah for under seven hundred thousand, this sold just a few months ago may 3rd 2022 uh for under seven hundred thousand, two and a half acres you know this is why this is cool this is a good variety you're not going to get this for this price, <laughs> um, you know, up north in the in the major markets, uh, Seattle, um, Issaquah, uh, even in the Valley, North Bend, Fall City, Snoqualmie, still much more expensive than this. Now, I doubt this thing's going to be updated or anything, but let's just take a look. I haven't seen this one anyway. This is nice. Nice yard, two and a half acres, detached garage. <sighs> Nothing wrong with this at all. So there you go. This is a great example. Under 700000 in black diamond so this is like your traditional area of black diamond outside of 10 trails um you know decent sized house three bed two bath 1700 square feet okay so that's one um that's a, that's a perfect one to show you guys for like the average so i could show you probably more like that if i went and searched for a lot longer but i want to show you the 10 trails and then also the estates and that'll kind of be the three general areas or general things that you can get in black diamond uh, which is meant to give you an idea of you know if you are shopping in black diamond do you want the 10 trails cookie cutter do you want the reasonably priced but some acreage like the one we just saw under seven hundred thousand, or are you an estate person these houses are awesome obviously i think most people maybe would would want them but not everyone can afford them because they are outstanding so there's one i saw earlier that was really great here we go this is a good one so 1.6 million this is the gated community yeah so curtis lang resale in gated community 
So this community is called the Meadows at Lake Sawyer. Um, so this is just an example. Like I said, this is already sold. So um, 1.6 million, but it is, it's two and a half acres, but it's almost 4,000 square feet. Uh, so much more of an estate, you know, as like I said, gated community, lots of land, pretty usable land, very open concept. I don't need to go through every single picture. This is like I said, just to get you an idea of, you know, kind of what you can get out here to another one of these, because this neighborhood's awesome. This is all that neighborhood. You see, it's all down the same road. They kind of have a dead end. This one's in a cul-de-sac. This one looks like it's the dead end too. Let's take a look at this one. Pretty similar, 3,700 square feet, 1.7. This is 1.6, 3,100 square feet. Again, same, same thing, gated community. Beautiful house. Okay, so these are great examples of what you're getting. So these, you know, we'll call it the mid mid millions, mid one millions for these estate type properties in Black Diamond. And these estate type properties do exist in other areas like Snoqualmie, kind of the Valley area. They don't don't really exist, obviously, in Seattle or even Bellevue. Really, well, maybe some of Bellevue, but like for five six million. Um, so anyway, this if if this is kind of your cup of tea, this is a great area and good bang for your buck uh, for getting this kind of stuff here. Okay, so now here's a 2.25. Let's check this one out. Oh yeah, this is actually the one I saw. This one is gorgeous. So almost 5,000 square feet, 4,800 square feet, four acres, just over 2 million sold. So, but this is a pretty special house. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Four acres. Look at that. Oh, look at that. So you can see, you know, Black Diamond, it's not just an old <laughs> beat up town, you know, downtown, like they have these awesome estates. It, everything's changing with the 10 trails community, bringing in some money, uh, changing the whole dynamic of the area. So I do love this area for an investment opportunity. Okay. Last thing we'll do is check out 10 trails. So I have it right now on one plus acres. We'll take that off. Um, in 10 trails, you will not be getting one plus acres. So here you can see, boom, right here, this whole section right here that I'm circling, that's 10 trails. So you can see there's a lot of stuff going on because new construction, they pre-sell them. So they're pending for a long time. So there's always a lot that are pending at the same time. You can see some of the solds and then there's ones that are actually for sale right now. Actually, just for making this a little bit cleaner, let's just look at the ones for sale so we can actually see what's going on a little bit better. Okay, still a lot to look from. So I won't jump into every single picture uh, but this is just to get you an idea. So uh, let's do some low, middle, high for price points. But again, these are all the same community. So it's just going to be based on like square footage. So low end, you know, mid 500s for like a, the condo, the townhome that they were selling up here. I don't see one for sale up here. It's just this one area that they had those. Let me check solds real quick. I do want to show you guys that because that's kind of the entry level. up here. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So 500. So that's the low, low, low end. So these ones, I remember these ones, I went and looked at these. Um, so 1300 square feet, two bed, two and a half bath. These are technically condos. Um, so 500,000, that's the absolute lowest. They'll probably be worth a little bit. Well, probably similar now market's even gone down a little bit. Um, but I think they just sold out of these. So they do have, I think Lennar has other ones and there's another one builder that's doing condos as well. So there'll be more, you know, like I said, there's lots more building going on, but that's going to be your low end as of now, summer 2022 that I'm filming this. <clears throat> so low end condo 500,000, but it's new construction. That's the great part. Um, okay. So let me get out of the sold because there's too many now for houses. You know, I think that like the seven, eight hundred thousand, eight fifty is going to be like your average price. And that's going to be for like, you know, three, four bedroom, 2000 square feet type house. Let's see if we can find one of those by just hovering over a few. Let's see what the 750 one is. 2600 square feet. Not bad. Okay. So this one doesn't have the front garage. It has a garage in the back, the, the alleyway. So they have a lot of these ones that are closer facing the park. I guess it's an aesthetics thing, but they have the front door is not like where you would park and it's kind of it has a good look from the the cul-de-sac or the the roundabout that they're all facing this way but i i think they sell a little bit worse than having a traditional garage look um still a nice house right so there's an example
So yeah, there you go. So that's 2,600 square feet, 760,000. That's a good example of like your, your middle, your average, 625. So 2,000 square feet. Again, this is the no garage one. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Let's see if we can get some of the higher end ones. So this one, I know I just saw this one a couple of days ago, 880. So this one's 3,000 square feet. So this thing probably would have sold for more than a million, honestly, like four months ago. So things have changed pretty quickly. Um, but this one's got some upgrades. It's a corner lot, open concept, nice place, right? So about 900,000 for this one, almost. That's 3,000 square feet. So it doesn't get a whole lot bigger than that. I actually sold... I actually sold one of my clients one for just over a million recently, but there, and it depends on the builder, you know, different builders are different, like types of luxury, like Lennar is not a luxury builder. This Oak Ridge is pretty luxury type builder. So it depends on, you know, what you're looking for. There's probably some that are close to a million. Here's 1.5. So this is 4,200 square feet. So much bigger, Jesus. So much bigger size. Okay. So hopefully that gives you guys a good idea. Um, you know, like I said, you can get in the, I think we showed you guys a couple of six, 700,000 for, you know, getting a little bit of acreage, but not a crazy, amazing, you know, mansion house, you know, regular size. I think the other one was 17, 1800 square feet. Uh, you can get your estates, which are going to be four, you know, three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 square feet, usually one to five acres over there by Lake Sawyer, you know, really cool properties. And then you have all of 10 trails, which is, you know, kind of the main topic of this video because 10 trails, I, like I said, I do believe it is a game changer for black diamond in general. It's just, it's going to change the whole dynamic of the area. So previously they still had those estates and stuff. Um, but there just wasn't a lot going on in black diamond. So by, you know, building these 3000 houses, they're nice houses, they're good price points. They're bringing in money to the area. And at the same time, once that retail center opens up, they're going to get a, a lot more desirable once that's there. And once the school's there, and I think over time, um, the school district will change a little bit because of that directly. Um, so it, it's, it takes time for that to happen, but once, the community's built and there's more money in there because these are new these are homeowners that are buying new construction for you know close to a million dollars in some cases <clears throat> that changes the landscape of the area and so schools will get better as well um, because right now i didn't mention it in this video because this isn't the pros and cons but check out the pros and cons video one of the cons of black diamond is the school district um, and i hate to say it's a con because i don't think the enum Claw school district is a bad school district is just not as good as some of the districts that I typically work in. Um, you know, my, if you've watched my videos, you probably know where I live in Maple Valley, Derek's in uh, North Bend. So we're, and then we were born in Issaquah, Sammamish. So map wise, we're on the east side, uh, Sammamish, Issaquah, North Bend, Maple Valley, you know, so that whole area there um, are really great schools. Issaquah School District, Lake Washington and Bellevue School District are the basically the top three in the whole state. Um, so Enumclaw down here in Black Diamond, Enumclaw School District is not the top three in the state, but it is good. It's basically, it's a little bit above average, but it was a con in the video because um, like I said, it's not as good as a lot of the ones that we typically work in. So, but there's nothing wrong with it. And, I, and that's the reason why I think it's a good investment opportunity. Um, in that pros and cons video, I also mentioned that the biggest pro is the future growth potential getting in ground floor on these master plan communities is huge, especially when they have plans of retail and school. Um, most master plan communities, a lot of them, they just have houses. So the fact that they had this whole grand master plan um, around these awesome modern retail centers, schools, they're actually widening the roads um, just to kind of, um, you know, get prepared for all the traffic, not all the traffic, but the fact that there'll be more people there. Um, so anyway, that's my take on Black Diamond in general. I think it is a great investment opportunity. I think that if you're um, working remote, it's probably a good fit for you because it is a little bit farther out. So if you are traveling to these other areas, it's probably, it, it could be a little far, but it just depends, you know, case by case basis based on what you're looking for and what your budget is and what's most important to you is, you know, location to Seattle or Bellevue more important than the house you can get because Black Diamond has a good bang for your buck. Anyway, I'm rambling on. <clears throat> this is all part of what we need to talk about uh, if we hop on a Zoom call. So again, as always, if you have questions and you're exploring different markets in the areas that are in my expertise, drop us a comment. Um, 
email, text, whatever. We'll hop on Zoom call and talk about you know what's important to you and how we can help you make a smooth move. Um, and if you're looking and you're still kind of exploring about which areas are best, feel free to watch our other videos um, on some of our other favorite areas in King County. We'll see you next time.